Okay, we are ready to start sewing. We've got our sides pinned right here. I have my little stick up here just for measurement so that way I can make sure that some of the ends stick out the side. I have my needle all threaded and ready to go. And it's time to start. Now we're gonna be doing something called the running stitch and the running stitch is um, basically just means over, under, over, under, over, under. Um, and you can find a way that's comfortable for you to hold your project. I know I'm going to be sewing down, down, up, and up like this. One thing that I like to do is you want to make sure you're starting at the very end of your project. It doesn't really make sense to start down here in the middle since I'm going to be sewing one line. And another thing that I like to do is I actually like to sew away from me. I like to push the needle away from me. It's easier for me to control that way. So I'm actually going to turn my project so it kind of looks like a little house like this. And I'm going to sew up this side, across, up, and back up this way. I'm going to end right here. I'm going to leave this raw edge right here. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So to get sewing, I'm going to take my threaded needle with my big triple knot on the end of it. And what I'll do is I'm going to hold the ends right here and I'm going to push up from the bottom. You'll see that now my needle poked out this side. I'm going to pull that all the way through and it's going to catch on my needle. You don't want to really yank on it because then definitely your um, knot is going to pull out. And also, um, if your knot does pull all the way out like this, that tells you that your knot probably is not quite big enough. So one more time, I'm going to just push my needle in right here, right in the back. And just like how I put those pins in, I'm going to push my needle out the other side, pull, and then what I wind up with is my first stitch. So I'm going to do that again so that way you can see. I'll actually move this a little bit closer so that way you can see a little bit more. Okay. So I like to leave my um, sewing just sitting on the table. I think it's just easier to control. And again, I'm going to hold it like this, push in push out and pull and if it gets caught in the corner like that you can just pull it off and as you sew past these pins you can actually take them right out because they're just there to secure it so I'll flip this over so you can see what this looks like on the front now so now I have two stitches you want to keep your stitches really small and close together they should look like kind of dots on a treasure map that you should be following um, you don't want your stitches to get too big because then they're really easy to fall apart. And it's almost like you're just feeding it onto your needle. So instead of really thinking about pushing the needle into the fabric, I'm actually holding the needle kind of steady and I'm just folding the fabric over it. And you can actually do a couple of stitches at once once you get a little bit more comfortable with it. So if I look at the front, you can see my stitches are starting to come through. So I'm going to keep on going with my running stitch. Remember, you just go in and out, and in and out, and in and out. And look, notice how I'm kind of just holding my needle still, and I'm using my other hand to just sort of feed the fabric onto it, pushing it in and out, and bumping into the camera, in and out, and in and out. And if you get anything like this that happens, like any weird little loops, all you have to do is just kind of give a little bit of a pull, and they'll tighten up. So as you can see, I've got the first sort of stitches going. I'm going to keep going all the way around my flag, and I'm going to stop right here in the corner. So, um... Boys and girls, at this point right here, I'm ready to turn the corner, and it's really not anything complicated. All you have to do is literally just turn your fabric and then just keep sewing this direction. You don't need to do anything other than change directions. You do want to be paying attention to, however, how much thread you have left. Um, I have probably maybe about a foot left. You just want to make sure that if you look like you're going to run out of thread that you stop and we'll talk about how to tie a knot in it and you'll have to go get some more thread and kind of reload before you keep going. All right, so we're at the point now you can see I have about mm, maybe four or five inches of thread left. I know that I'm not going to make it all the way around. 
I think it's time for me to tie a knot in here. So um, I just wanted to show you a really easy way to tie a knot in the end of your sewing. Um, so one way that I like to do it is exactly the way that we tie the knot on, on our um, thread. So I like to hold on where this thread is ending right here, right here at the base of it. I'm going to create a loop. See how I'm just holding on to it so that makes a loop like this. And then what I like to do is sort of um, put the needle through the loop. And as I'm pulling on it, I'm just going to use my fingers to just hold that knot down as I'm pulling. And then that's one way to make it. Or another way that might be a little bit easier is you can also take your needle and just loop it underneath whatever last stitch you just made. So I'm just going to loop it right underneath of that stitch. And then that creates that knot right there. Creates a little loop right here. And then I'll take my uh, needle and I will just put it through that loop. And you don't want to pull super tight because you don't want to like bunch up your fabric. But I'll do it one more time because I want a nice double knot. So I'm going to put it underneath of that stitch. Right through that loop that I made. And pull. So now I've got a knot here. I can give that a snip. And I can go get myself a little bit more thread so I can finish up this last part. All right, so I've sewed all the way down and around. I stopped right here at this edge. I'm going to leave that where it is. And now I need to tie one more knot in here. I'm just going to show you a little bit closer, so hopefully you can see what I mean. I'm going to take my needle and just run it underneath my last stitch right there. And in doing that, I'm going to create a loop. I'm going to put my needle through that loop and give it a light pull. I don't want to really tug on it. And now I've got one knot. I'm going to do the same thing one more time. Go right underneath of that stitch. Through the loop. Give it one more good pull. Now I've got my double knot in there. That one's called a slip knot, by the way. It's for my boy or girl scouts out there. Give that a snip. Now I can take a look at the front of it. I can see that I have it stitched all the way down. All hemmed really nice. And now we're ready to tackle the top part. All right, last part of the sewing for this project is now we need to fold this part over so that way when we, uh, this rod that we have will have somewhere to sit inside of our um, project so that way we can put it on a string to hang up. So one more time, I'm going to flip this over so I'm looking at the back of it. So now I'm looking at all these little edges that I sewed. I'm actually going to flip this over so that way my point is facing up because I'm gonna to have to pin this. And one thing that's kind of important, and it might be helpful if you put this in here just so that you can see, is you need to pin this over so that way you can sew it and the stick can still kind of slide freely in and out. We're just gonna be sewing straight across here, so you just wanna make sure that you have enough room. I think right where I have it is nice, so I'm gonna take two of my pins. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm just gonna push it in and out. I want to be as close to the edge of this little fabric as I can be as I can get. I'll move my stick so it's not in my way. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Push it in. Push it out. Lay it nice and flat. So now I'm going to sew straight across here. And keep in mind, you want to sew as close to this raw edge as possible. Because if you sew too close this way, the stick is not going to have enough room to fit in there. So I have a little bit of leftover thread already on my needle. I'm going to see if this looks like it's enough to sew across the top. And it looks like it's a little bit too short. So I'm going to go get a little bit more thread so I can sew across the top of this thing. All right, one more piece of thread. Just a quick refresher when we go to thread your needle. You want to get it all the way up in your fingertips. Push it through the eye of your needle. Bring those two ends together. And 
wrap it loosely around your finger. So you've got those little bunny ears sticking up. Pull that loop off so you can see the little letter P. And then push those ends through your loop and give it a pull. And we need to do a triple knot. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, loop it around my finger, push my ends through the loop. And now when I'm pulling, I want to make sure that I'm being careful that my new, lot, new knot lands on top of my old knot because the whole point is to keep stacking your knots to make them a little bit bigger. One more time. Okay, got my triple knot. Gonna sew across this way. I'm gonna be careful to stay nice and close to this edge right here. And in fact, I can actually move that pin so it's not in my way. It was really just there to hold this in place while I was getting ready. I actually want to go in from the back because I want that knot to be in the back. Push in and out, and then just as I did on all the other sides, I'm going to go sew straight across. All right, I made it to the end. I'm going to go ahead and tie my knot. So I'm going to take my needle. Loop it underneath whichever was my last stitch. Put it through that loop I just created. Give it a light tug. Do the same thing one more time. Through that loop I just made. One more time, give it a little bit of a tug. And you can give that a snip. It over to look at the front. Oof, one little off course there. It happens. And then I'm going to take my stick and push it through. It might get a little bit caught on one side, and that's all right. You just kind of have to wiggle it. Sometimes it helps to kind of open it up and use your finger to sort of guide it out the other side. Okay. All right. I have my stick inserted. I'm all ready to use whichever color yarn you would like to pick. You don't need a huge piece. And we're just going to tie two knots on each end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that end and just like you're tying your shoes, you're just going to tie a knot. One, I'm going to do a double knot. And two, you want to pull this one really pretty tight because you don't want it sliding all off the stick. Two, so there's one. I'll do the other side. Let me measure this, see if it seems like a good length. I think so. One and two. Okay, now I've got my stick all strung up, and I am all finished sewing. Looks great.